Ah, the signs of summer. Birds in the trees, bees in the grass, lawnmowers all around and surrounded by annoying neighbours. What more could you want? It's summer with Paul and Marcus. Last summer I made a telescope and looked at the night sky. This year I'm going to have a go at making a buzzy bumblebee. And it says you don't need scissors or anything like that. So what could possibly go wrong? It also says that it's suitable for children aged five and up. So surely I can make a go of this. Right, there are instructions. And what I have to do first of all is push out the first bit, which is the, the largest part of the bee. And of course, I don't want to rip any of it along the way. There we are, that came out quite easily. So you can actually see the, the bee's face there. Now, I think the idea is to fold each one of these round like this, and it should join in the middle like this. There we are. Look, there's the first, the first bit. Which way is it going? <laughs> and then this bit folds in on itself as well. So you take all the little pieces and fold them all over. And then I think these are supposed to go on the outside because that is where the bee's face would be. Ah, would be. <laughs> so there is a little groove there. I guess I put one of these in there like that and there's a groove at this side as well so the other side should snap in there it is rather fiddly though i guess if you were a five-year-old you'd have smaller fingers and it might make it a bit easier ah right this is making sense there are little grooves on each one i thought that there was only grooves on the eyes, but no, the whole way round has little grooves. So they should just slot in. You just have to push them out a little bit as you go around. And one more. Of course, it's a lot smaller than what I thought it was. But then bees aren't that big, really, are they? So look. There is the first part of our busy, busy, busy bee. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we now need to put the back end on. So, <laughs> yes, the bee's bum. So this all just snaps out again like this. And I think I'm going to fold them over first of all, just to try to make it a little bit easier. And there are grooves here as well so if i just look at the instructions yeah it's funny because it doesn't actually show on the instruction that this is a dark part but this definitely would be the back end of the bee so do you reckon that's its tail going down mm. like that yes okay so we'll start with this bit at the top maybe it should just fold oh. over itself or something Fold over itself. Fold under itself? I don't know. Yeah, I think it just snaps in. Let's see. Are you yeah. supposed to like fold it? Oh, like this? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I should fold that bit as well. You are right. Ah, yes, and then that. So you're basically building like a house. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure this is, <laughs> this is working out as intended, but anyway. I mean, what other way could it be? See, B. You're watching the BBC. No, you're not. Just watching the BBB. I used to be in the BB. Do you know what that is, Paul? What's, what is The BB? Boys Brigade. I lasted a week and then I joined the Scouts. And I was thrown out of them as well. 
for laziness. You're making progress. I am. Look, look at this. I have actually created the main body of the bee. But there's How many more. more parts are there? Right. So now it's got its wings and its little feet. So we'll do the wings first of all. Ooh, this is a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really hard. Yeah. Uh, well, it still could be. Um, right, so there should be little grooves somewhere. Oh, yes, of course the wing. The wings go on the top of the bee, not the bottom. Do you stick it on or do you, does it So, I think... Well, it says that there should be two slots. Oh, I see. I think it goes around like this. There should be two smaller... Yeah, yeah. So, basically, it's the wings and the other bits are the antennae. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, look. That's easy. Oh, I see. So it basically just folds, <laughs> <laughs> just folds over to make it thicker and then it actually stays in place. Oh, it's a bit buzzy around here. Right. And then we have the two antennae. Now, which way does that go around? Ah, the smaller bit goes in. Oh, this is the difficult bit now because I think I should have pressed mm. the the gap before I put it together. Uh oh. Oh yeah. Come back in a moment after I get a pair of scissors to stick in here. Right. Now I can make a couple of little holes here. The holes are already made, but I should have poked them through before I put it all together. And now there should be room for the antennae to go in, just like that. There's one. And two. And there it is. My lovely little busy bee. Bzzz. Hey, Paul, <laughs> I'm going to sting you. Bzzz. No, thanks. Ow. Paul, what do you know about bees? They like to pollinate plants and flowers, and they um, help with the ecosystem of plants and the wildlife. That is right. But did you know that an average beehive can hold around 50,000 bees? What? And did you know that losing its stinger will cause a bee to die? Oh no. Bees have been around for about 30 million years. And did you know that bees can fly at 20 miles per hour? That's almost the same speed of cars in wheels. <gasps> what is small, black and yellow and drops things? Bees? A fumblebee. That'll be me. What do bees chew? Bumblegum. And what do you call a bee with messy hair? A frisbee. Why are you hedging your bets? Well, you shouldn't be hedging your bets. You should be subscribing to It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. Now, can I spot any bees in our garden? Apart from the one that I made, of course. You saw one earlier, didn't you, Paul? I think I saw two. Did we scare it away? No, look, there's one over there. See? No, I don't want to get stung. But there's definitely one down there. And would you believe that these are the flowers that we planted on our episode two years ago? And the first year, last year, they bloomed up in a small way. And now this year, we've got this massive array. Look at this, if you sort of pan back a bit. Look, they stretch all over here. Another one of the sounds of summer. I love this, especially on a Sunday. This isn't a Sunday when we're recording this, but it's, it's when you get an airplane flying overhead. 
there's just something really special about that. And that's one of the noises that I do like in the summer, like lawnmowers. And we will be seeing one of those very shortly. But let's continue to look in the garden. We did actually cut the grass once this year already. And we purposely left this area wild because I thought it would be a disgrace to cut down all those lovely flowers. And when we do cut the grass, again, later in this episode, we are going to be leaving this bit. And that's good news for you, isn't it, Paul? Because it's less work to do. <laughs> now, come over here because these lovely flowers, and if you look really closely at them, they've got little sunbeams. See that? Sunbeams. But they're not the only flowers in our garden. Oh, no. Because if you come over here, you will see that there are these sort of magenta coloured ones and these are wild flowers. I've no idea what they are. You can leave a comment for us to say what it might be. Oh, what's this? Is there something on my foot? No. <laughs> That's a nettle, I think. Or yeah. a, a thistle. No, it is a nettle. Yeah. And over here, we've even got some of the little flowers that we planted Maybe and the seeds have scattered. Now, do you know what these are, Paul? Oh, the... Yeah, I forgot what they're called. Well, isn't it the dandelion? That's what happens to the dandelion when no. when the orange disappears. Now, we did have some dandelions in the garden, but they seem to have disappeared. But over here, look, these flowers too. have even spread over here. Oh, no, no. Look at this. This is an interesting thing, Paul. Here is a dandelion, but do you know why it's closed? because the sun's down. Indeed, and that is one of the things with dandelions and daisies as well. They only come out when the sun is shining. So if that part of the garden's in the shade as it is, it'll be closed. But over here, we have some lovely daisies and they are open, almost. They're sort of like half in the shade. Some of them have been slightly trampled by us. Yes, so that's not so good. In fields of flowers where sunbeams gleam, a buzzy little bee, a golden dream. With wings that hum, a cheerful sound, buzzy bee dances all around. Among the petals bright and sweet, buzzy bee gathers nectar to eat. Buzzing from bloom to bloom with glee, nature's tiny worker so busy and free. With stripes of black and yellow so bright, buzzy bee takes its daring flight. A pollinator on a mission so grand, spreading life across the land. From rose to daisy and every bloom, Buzzy Bee helps the garden's groom. A gentle touch on petals fair, bringing life to the scented air. Buzzy Bee, your nature's friend, a tireless worker until the end. In gardens and meadows you bring delight, a symbol of nature's harmonious flight. So buzz away, O oh buzzy bee, in your dance of life so carefree, a tiny hero in the grand design, buzzy bee, forever divine. Hello, everybody. Do you know what time it is? Let me give you a hint. The small hand is on the 10 and the larger hand is on the six. That means it is 10.30 and in the summer, this is what time it will get dark in some parts of the United Kingdom.
indigo. Oh. Wow, that was a lot of work. Well, Paul, well done. And look, one bag full. Isn't that amazing? A big bag. <laughs> and it's just as well that it is being collected tomorrow so we can put that out yeah. tonight. Yeah, it is. Um, but I am really amazed by how much the flowers have grown throughout these two years, you said. And I think we're going to leave this as a sort of a wild meadow. Well, for now, because they will die away, I suppose. Hmm. Well, that's the end of the first of our summer series, but there are so many episodes to come throughout July and August. We will be visiting various pubs along the way. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, yes. Yes, indeed. And also some of our favourite places that you could also visit this summer. But before we go, for those of you that have liked it, give us a thumbs up. For those of you that haven't subscribed yet, which I'm not sure why you haven't subscribed already, just hit the subscribe button and it will help us on our YouTube journey along the way. And for those of you that want to leave a comment, you could do so as well. And would you also like to buy us a coffee? Well, if that is the case, there is a link in the description and it we would be also very help us along the way too. Yes, and we are hoping to hit that 1000 subscriber mark this year. So we will see you next time. Bye. Oh wait, where's my bee? Where is it? I'm here. Mmm, flowers. Nectar. Mmm, very nice. Am I the only bee here right now? Bzzz.